Finally, something that isn't garbage. What I have for you today is a very special Fort Technologies GOSS 6 rated ceramic plate. These plates are most typically worn today by FSB TSSN Spitznas or the Russian Army's SSO Special Forces. They can also be found in the goblet carriers used by SVR's Zaslon team. These plates represent the cutting edge of what the Russian government issues out, and it certainly wasn't a cheap or straightforward affair to get this set into the United States. There is some variation in these Fort Ceramic plates, and some are rated GOSS 6A when combined by an Aramid FSL backer, though today we'll just be testing a standalone plate. Each plate weighs 6.5 pounds, coming in at slightly lighter than the Ratnik GOSS 6A plate. Before we start testing, a short word from my sponsor, Commando Store. Commando Store is the purveyors of snacks, surplus, and their new mini gondola. With 3.5 inches of dangly legs and love, he's ready to go with you wherever the open road leads. Clip them onto your pack, your plate carrier, or even your rear view mirror. They're offering a few bonuses as well before production ends, and they ship this July. Get some stickers, a shirt, or even a mystery gift. And if you don't actually know what Gondola is, you should definitely look him up, as he's also my mascot. I'm excited to see if these plates perform better than the Ratnik ones. And just as before, we're not fucking around. Starting with our best penetrator, the Tungsten Cord M993 308 round out of a 21 inch FAL barrel from 15 feet. No penetration and not enough deformation to do any damage, and that's really something. It looks almost as if the round was shattered by the plate, and I don't think I can realistically get a hotter or harder hitting small arm round than that. If the Tungsten 308 round didn't go through, basically I have no recourse short of a 50 cal. But don't worry, we'll at least be making an effort to test the durability. We followed up by shooting roughly the same area with a 30 out 6 API round. Rolling. That round went through the compromised plate section no problem. I just wanted to see if the plate might lose some consistency from the incendiary material. But that was wishful thinking, and truth be told, I just wanted to see another explosion. Let's do an autopsy. Removing the waterproof cover reveals a thin layer of aramid surrounding a carbon fiber wrapped plate composed of hexagonal ceramic tiles and a polyethylene backer. Under a spectrometer, these tiles are revealed to consist of silicon carbide. This combination of ballistic materials is pretty reminiscent of a few higher-end Western NIJ Level 4 plates. And if you do recognize any specific similarity, please leave a comment. Buffman, for example, thought that these plates kind of looked like the Ukrainian U-Arm plates. On the multi-hit durability side of things, I conducted a follow-up test of this plate versus the Army's new M855A1. We hit the same exact spot three times in a row but the plate only stopped the first round. This round off to the right, however, was indeed stopped. So the idea next was to try to get within a single hexagon length away from the initial impacts. This round, just one hexagon away, did not penetrate. This next upper hit, however, did penetrate. These results are pretty good for a ceramic plate. Although I did notice some sparking from the slow motion, suggesting some limited splash effects. I found some jacket from the 556 rounds that's embedded in the carbon fiber. Perhaps the thin layer of aramid is supposed to diminish that effect slightly. Stopping a tungsten 308 round is no easy feat. Russian special forces finally have a body armor that's better than some American issued plates, and honestly on par with the best. Plus, this test was done without the Kevlar FSL backer. I do wonder how these plates would do against the Army's new 6.8mm round. I highly doubt that this new round would be able to penetrate these plates on the first shot when a big tungsten penetrator can't do it either. Fresh body armor tests are coming soon, as well as a continued look on the most modern Russian Special Forces helmets. I'd like to take a moment to remind you that this test, just like all the others, was extremely expensive and wouldn't have been possible without generous support from Patreon donations and my sponsor, Commando Store. If you'd like to protect this channel and see it grow, please consider donating on Patreon or Coffee.
They're coming up. They're coming up. You can't see them because there's a button there. There's a dude right fucking next. Shit, they're crashing. Sundown, you better take care.